So flying in a place like this, it's beautiful, it's amazing, it's fun, there's mountains everywhere, we're high up, and one of the biggest threats, of course, is density altitude. So let's talk a little bit about that today. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. So one of the things that you really have to deal with here and that we've talked about like in our flights, on, on every flight, and there's even a sign at the end of the runway before you take off is density altitude. Um, and as I'm sure you all know, density altitude is? Pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature and pressure. Exactly. So which, you know, we never really have that standard day here. And it's almost always, even, even in cooler months, the density altitude is almost always higher than the field elevation. And we're up at 5,900 feet here. So it's really quite serious. And especially, you know, on a day like today where it's pretty warm, we're about noon. The density altitude is what, 9,000 feet? 8,500 feet? It's probably 81, 82. But I think what, what gets forgotten a lot is uh, pilots are trained to understand density altitude and how it affects the performance of an airplane, the lift of a wing and everything like that. But here, they might not couple that education with the fact that you're already at 6,000 feet. So you can have density altitude be a factor at sea level or you know, 1,000, 2,000 feet above, above sea level, but starting out at 6,000 feet or so above sea level at compounds, where now you're up to 9,000 feet, which for some aircraft could almost be considered their service ceiling. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. So if, if, if you don't take that into account and you're heavy or what might have worked at seven, eight o'clock in the morning from a performance standpoint, uh, you don't really calculate what's going on now at noon or one or two, you could end up in a pretty tough spot. And unfortunately here in Truckee, we have had issues. Right. Uh, with, so the, with visiting pilots or with pilots based here? I or? would say with everything because uh, unfortunately, sometimes complacency settles in yeah. and the airport tries to counteract that by putting warnings and density altitude calculation signs around the airport as a reminder. Right, I've noticed that and I've also noticed that there are a lot of permanent signs about uh, just the differences of, of, of mountain flying here as well. You know, density altitude often a factor in mountain flying, but even more than that, it's, or not more than that, but in addition to that, there's the mountain weather, there's the mountain winds, there's the updrafts and downdrafts, those quick pop-up thunderstorms. It's such a risk factor that people really underestimate. And just as you said, you can academically understand something and learn about it and, and think, and then look at your book and say, my POH says that I can do this, but then the reality of doing it is very, very different and it's very, very uncomfortable. And even if you have a really powerful engine, you know, this is a pretty powerful engine, powerful, powerful plane. You're a very experienced pilot. You know this area very, very well. Um, and there are a lot of components on this plane to, to not only have a powerful engine to overcome the density altitude, but also to add lift to the wings to overcome that density altitude. Because even with a powerful engine, there's only so much lift that can be created, which I think people often forget. And you sometimes hear the phrase, you know, you can't turbocharge a wing. The other thing is like, just because you can take off, which you might be able to do, doesn't mean you can outclimb the surrounding terrain, which is a problem we've seen, you know, in, in accidents in the past and definitely accidents specifically here as well, that just because you can get off the ground doesn't mean that you can keep climbing and be safe. So. You know, you also mentioned the POH twice, and those are calculated and done under perfect conditions with professional pilots. In a brand new plane. Uh, in a brand new airplane, and uh, you have to take that into account because they're, they are marketing materials. Right, right, yeah, and I think that people think of themselves as that perfect pilot, the person who can get that perfect POH performance out of it, and it's really uncomfortable for people to, for all pilots to, to admit, you know, maybe I can't fly as well as the book Says, I, says that this airplane can fly. So again, they're unrealistic, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis with a plane that's been through, you know, years and years of flying. And then to add in the, the, the skill of a pilot and the ego of a pilot, you know, makes it even more complex, yeah. so. All right, so I'm gonna read you a couple of things to do a run up. And you're, you're used to carbureted airplanes, I'm sure. Am, yeah. And leaning mixtures. Yes. Let's go ahead and bring that throttle up to 1700. Yes, sir. Or even 1800, whatever okay. it is. You have the brakes? I got them. Okay. And slowly bring out that mixture. Okay. Until you get a dip. And we're leaning because we're at a high density altitude, right? You bet. 
leaning for takeoff. Do that for best power. For best power. All right, let's give it a smidge of back pressure. Ooh, just like that. Wow, look at that. <laughs> So something else that we did, we did something that most people, you know, at sea level probably aren't super familiar with, which is leaning the mixture for takeoff. So, you know, often on your checklist it says, put your mixture full rich or best power. And most people just say, oh, full rich is best power. But can you tell me a little bit more about what that's like and, and why you do that instead of just doing the whole full rich thing? Well, a normally aspirated engine like these are, uh, they drink fuel and they breathe air. And that fuel to air mixture has got to be a, a, a specific ratio to create what we call peak performance or peak power. The higher you are, uh, whether it's in density, in, in density, well, specifically density altitude at this point, the leaner your mixture has to be to keep that, again, air combination to, 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 to fuel combination correct. Uh, so you do what's called leading it to peak by hearing, or some people have instrumentation that can adjust for that. And uh, even as you climb or descend, you might make more adjustments until you are at sea level, which would be a full rich scenario. Right. Uh, and we can't emphasize here how important that is because you want every ounce of power that you have. Right, yeah, yeah, we did all of our operations at, at not full rich. Right. So, yeah. yeah, which is not, I don't think, the typical experience. No, on a, on, a, on a really hot day, you know, A, you can save some fuel. It's one way to look at it. Yeah. But we're not here to save fuel. We're here to be safe yeah. and, uh, and, and, and smart. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And that's another component that visiting pilots or, you know, even people who operate out of here need to be familiar with is knowing how to get that best power out of your engine because you are going to want all of it. And flying out of here full rich is absolutely not what you want to do because that won't be getting the most power. Well, the checklist doesn't know what altitude you're at the pilot needs to know what altitude you're at. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. Cool, well thanks for all your insights on density altitude and for talking about it and hopefully, you know, people watching this can take something away and if you're going to a high density altitude airport this summer, you know, be prepared or at any time, you know, be prepared, know the performance of your airplane, uh, can take into consideration the weight and- And check with a local pilot. And check with a local pilot. That's one of the best things about you know, is, is calling up and getting that local knowledge and yeah. learning about the weather patterns and learning tips on, on how to fly safely here. Um, yeah, and fly safe and have a good flying season. <laughs>